everyone, Nick Mandera here with Eamon Save Audio. Today we're going to run through the Dirac Room correction process together. To get things going, I'm going to go into a quick overview of what we will be doing here today before we jump directly into the software. Note, if you haven't watched our Dirac interface overview, please click the link up here or down in the video description to watch that video first. Now that we have our Dirac interface kit hooked up and on the network, we can proceed. Our first steps will be connecting our processor microphone to the included A to D digitizer microphone cable via the XLR connection. We want to make sure that the microphone is pointed up towards the ceiling so it picks up not only the speakers but the room as it interacts with the system. Next, we're going to place the microphone in the first measurement position. This first position is the sweet spot of your listening area. The sweet spot will always be ear level at the center seat or listening position whether you are using a single chair or a sofa. One thing that can easily affect the results you will get during this process is if you are in the picture with the microphone. That means sitting next to the microphone in the seat or holding it in your hand. That will negatively affect your results during the sweep process. We recommend using a microphone stand to make this process easier to capture your measurements. This allows you to get out of the way and let your microphone properly pick up the speakers in your room. We've placed a link in the description below for one that we use ourselves. Next, we will take the USB end of our digitizer cable and plug it into our computer. Do not plug the USB cable into the front of the processor. The software is designed only to run on the home desktop or laptop. If you need a longer extension, feel free to use an extra XLR cable to get the cable distance you need. We've placed a link in the description below for our 2 meter XLR cable. If you need longer than the two meters, you can purchase multiple XLR cables and daisy chain them together. Quick note, if you haven't set up your processor, please click the link above or the one in the description below to watch our quick start guide and follow those steps. You will want to make sure that your processor is set to the configuration in your room. Your processor comes with all 16 channels as active and Iraq will take all those active channels into account. So make sure you turn off any channels that you aren't using. Now that we have our Dirac interface kit up and running and our microphone set, we need to enable Dirac on the processor. You can store up to three Dirac equalizations on each of the two speaker presets. So for this demo, we're going to enable Dirac on preset one. Let's jump right in. I have a black screen right now on my input and I'm going to bring up the on-screen display by hitting menu on the remote. Next, we will scroll down to setup. Click right to go to speakers, which opens up the full size OSD. Then we will click right again to preset one, and then right again to enter the preset one speaker menu. From here, we will scroll down to Dirac Live, then scroll right to enable, then right again to check the box. Click up on the remote to enable Dirac Live. This will now lock you out of the controlling of the processor during the tuning process. Now we will jump over to the computer section of our demo. You will want to make sure that your computer is on the same network as your processor and your Dirac interface kit. I will be running this demo using a Mac, but it'll work the same using a PC as well. If you haven't done so yet, you will need to download the Dirac software. We've provided a link below in the description for you to download it for your PC or for your Mac. After you have visited the link to the Dirac website and downloaded the software, you will want to also download our Dirac microphone calibration file to your computer. We have posted that in the link in the description as well. Make sure to keep track of where you downloaded the mic calibration file. Mine has gone to my downloads folder, but you might have your browser to set to save files to a different location like your desktop or to your documents. Next, we will launch the Dirac software. If using a Mac, you can click the magnifying glass in the top right and start typing Dirac to pull up the software, or you can find it in your applications tab on the finder. On PC, you'll be able to find the Dirac software in your programs from the start menu. When the Dirac Live software launches, your processor will show up under Select Device. In this demo, I'm using an RMC1, but this will work the same way with the RMC1L and the XMC2. Once you are connected to your processor, you will want to upload your mic calibration file. Click the C Media USB device and click Load from File. From here, head on over to where you saved the mic calibration file and hit Open. Now that the mic calibration file has been uploaded, proceed to volume calibration. This page shows us the speaker configuration that the processor has set. In this demo, we will be doing 9 points on a 5.1.4 system. 
First up on this page, we want to set our microphone gain. We want to either lower or boost that to be around negative 30 dB. Next, we will go through all of our speakers and set their output by sliding the bar up or down so that the level output is in the green. Click the play button on your first speaker. This will now cause pink noise to play through your system. Adjust the slider so that the output of that speaker is in the green. Continue this step for all the speakers in your system. Notice that I have left my right front, center, and left front speakers higher than the others. That will trigger a clipping warning in the measurement step, so we can see what the next steps will be for that situation. You will also want to make sure to select the correct filter spot on the left if you are planning on having multiple filters. I have already run a 5.1 test, so we will select the next empty filter for this project. Now that we have calibrated our speakers, let's proceed to Select Arrangement. Here is where we will set the arrangement of our seating so we know where to measure. Your options are Wide Imaging, Focused Imaging, or Tightly Focused Imaging. Select the closest corresponding arrangement to your room setup. For this demo, we will be using the focused arrangement setting. Next, we will proceed to measure. Here is where we will record all of our measurements. The white ball highlights the position that you are measuring. The first measurement is always the sweet spot like we talked about earlier. This diagram gives you a visual placement for all the positions you will run. We will go ahead and measure our first selected position, which Dirac calls main position. The Dirac software will now run sweeps through all of your speakers. Make sure to be very quiet during this process to get the best result. Now like we talked about earlier. We trigger a clipping error so you can see what will happen if you go beyond the proper levels. To fix this issue, we will click Dismiss, then go back to the volume calibration. We will now decrease the output of the front stage speakers to a level that won't clip. We will then go back through the next steps and to measure our selected positions again. Now when we run our main position, we will make it through with no issues.
Now that we have run that position, we can see all of the room feedback on each channel. On the right, you can hover your mouse over each speaker to see their individual measurements. If you don't like what you see, you can clear the data for that position, remeasure for a selected position, or move on to measure the next position. We will move forward to the next position, which is labeled the front top right position. And we will now measure this position. Move forward to the next position, which is labeled as the front top left position, and go ahead and measure. Continue these steps for the remainder of the positions in your system. We will speed up the video to make it through the remaining speaker positions for this demo. Remember, we are only running 9 positions on this demo, but for the larger seating areas, you can record up to 17 positions. So keep in mind, this process can take some time, especially for those that are running the full 16 available channels and all of the available positions in their rooms. Now that we have our positions recorded, it is time to proceed to filter design. From here, we are now able to see the room capture for each speaker in our system and adjust the target curve if we wish to. On the right, you can see that I can adjust the speakers individually or I can adjust them by individual groups as well. This makes it easy to manually adjust specific sound characteristics for each group of speakers as well as the speaker itself. Now we can proceed to filter export. We will need to pick a slot in which to save our filter to. Here we will save this 5.1.4 layout to slot 2, then click replace existing filter. This will now export your filter to your processor. But let's say I want to make a change now after we've exported it. I can still select a group or individual speaker to adjust. For fun, I will slightly change the low end levels on my surrounds here. I will proceed to filter export and select the third filter spot to show you how easy it is to select these filters and make adjustments to your system.
And there you have it. Dirac is now set up on your system and you are ready to start listening. As always, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for your time today. And from all of us at Emotiva, happy listening. Mm -hmm.